Hi, I'm Lisa from Australian Travel and Migration blog, dreamingofdanunder.com. And today I'm going to talk about the differences between university in Australia and university in the UK. I did my degree at the University of Sheffield in the UK, I did a maths degree, and I also spent a year as a foreign exchange student in Brisbane, Australia at the University of Queensland. But I'm going to run through all the differences that I found, including academic things, lifestyle, nightlife and accommodation. If you're thinking of studying in either of these countries as an international student or if you want to do an exchange year to one of those countries, this should help you decide which one to choose. Starting with the academic differences, in the UK it's really common to study just an academic subject that you study at school for your degree. So for example you just choose history or geography or maths or English and then you'd carry that on to degree level unless you're doing something really specific like training to be a doctor or nurse. In Australia, it seemed to be much more common to do vocational subjects for your degree. So things like engineering, teaching, physiotherapy, this seems to be much more common than in the UK. And when they do study an academic subject, it seems to have a much broader title. I remember people saying they were doing a science degree, which you would never have in the UK. You'd do biology or chemistry or physics, and you'd pretty much only study that one subject. So my maths lectures in the UK used to have about 100 people in and then in Australia we'd have sometimes 10 people in, maybe 30 the most. I think everyone that I've ever told that I did a maths degree to in Australia were just completely baffled, they just never heard of such a thing. So when I started my degree in the UK I remember them telling us that we'd probably never use anything that we were learning but it was more the skills that we were learning that would be useful to employers, so problem solving and logic. So even my friends in the UK who knew what sort of career they wanted, they weren't studying for that career specifically. The grading system is also very different in Australia to the UK. So in the UK, you're given your exact percentage when you take each module. And if you've got 70% or above, that's a first. If you've got 60 to 70, that's a 2-1. 50 to 60 is a 2-2. And then you have a third and I think a pass or fail after that. In Queensland, in Australia, they used what's called a GPA, which is a grade point average, and this was on marks up to seven. So if you got 85% or above, that would be a seven, and that's a high distinction. If you got 75 to 84, that would be a distinction, and that would be a six, and then it went down in bands of 10% like that. I would say that getting over 85 in Australia is equivalent to getting over 70 in the UK. I got about 15% higher in Australia than I did in any year in the UK. I'll go through that in more detail later. So in terms of the way courses are structured, this will be different for every subject. But for me, I preferred the structure in Australia much more than in the UK. So in Sheffield, I had to study six different subjects per semester. There was virtually no coursework. And when there was coursework, you weren't allowed to get any help on it. It was virtually 100% exam based, so you'd have six exams at the end of each semester. For each subject you did, you'd have two hours a week of lectures and one hour of tutorials, so a total of 12 hours of lectures a week and six hours of tutorials. In Queensland, I only had to study four subjects per semester instead of six, but they each had three hours of lectures a week instead of two, plus a tutorial. So even though there were less subjects to study, they went into them a little bit deeper, so it was the same amount of work and the same level of difficulty. Australia had quite a bit more coursework than we had in the UK, and you were allowed to get help on it, so anything you didn't understand, you could just go and ask the lecturers to help you. In one class I had, you even got marks for turning up to the tutorial, and that was 10% of your grade. So even though it was the same volume of work, just having eight courses to balance through a year instead of 12 made such a massive difference. It was so much easier. In Sheffield, we'd sometimes have six homeworks to hand in, in all in one week. And it was just so much easier to get good grades in Australia than in the UK for me. And then at the end of the year, your lecturers in the UK had to transfer your grades over and try and put that into the English system. So I think I got something like 86% from my year in Australia and I could never have got that in England. I got it in a few subjects but never as an average. I got I think around 70 to 72% overall when I was in England. So if I hadn't done the exchange year I would have still got a first but I would have just scraped it whereas after that year in Australia because that was 40% of my overall grade I think I only needed to pass the fourth year and then I would have got a first. So it was really really good in terms of bumping up your grades. However, places for the exchange year were based on your grades, so if you got lower grades in England, they wouldn't have let you do the year. In terms of how strict the universities are, in, in the UK it's all very formal, the lecturers wear shirts and ties, they're very smart. In Australia, 
Some of them would wear shorts and t-shirts. One of them, who was a PhD student, used to come in barefoot. <laughs> and when I revisited the university recently on a trip to Brisbane, I saw a sign saying, no bare feet allowed in this building, <laughs> which that just wouldn't be necessary in England. <laughs> so onto student accommodation. It was very similar in Australia and the UK. So in the UK, we have what's called halls of residences, where lots of students live in one building and you have long corridors with lots of single rooms off them, usually a shared kitchen. Australia was very similar, apart from they call it a college instead of halls. So in both countries, you would only have a single room. You don't ever have a shared room or a dormitory like you would have in the USA. One of the differences was in the UK, you really only spend your first year in halls and then in your second year and third year, you get together into groups of friends and then you'd go into a share house. Whereas in Australia, lots of people were staying in halls for their entire degree. So there was first years, second years and third years all together. Another difference in Brisbane was that there's two universities and people from both universities were living in the same halls. That would never happen in the UK, I don't think. It wouldn't happen in Sheffield. One of the other big differences between halls and colleges in Australia is a lot of the colleges in Australia were either single sex or had religious affiliations, whereas in the UK they were all mixed sex and never any religious affiliations at all. So the one I chose was the cheapest one. It was mixed sex and it was kind of known as the party college, I suppose, but it was... I couldn't imagine going in a single sex hall or why you'd want to. The college in Australia was much nicer than our halls in Sheffield. So in Sheffield I was in Ranmore House, which is now demolished, uh, and Union College in the University of Queensland. And in Queensland we had a massive sports oval outside, we had an on-site gym, the food was quite nice and you could help yourself to vegetables and salad. In England you just got what you were given. <laughs> In Australia we had like a movie room with a big screen, we had a big sort of common room with a fireplace, so yeah it was very different, it was very nice in Australia. Also very very green and leafy on campus in Australia. In terms of being a foreign student and how many other people there were, in the UK I honestly remember one foreign student from Germany and that's it, and in Australia there was absolutely loads of exchange students, so people from America, Canada, Singapore, Korea, the UK, um, Russia. This did make the year more fun because everybody really wanted to make the most of it and go out and see things and go out at night. Unfortunately, me and the others from my university in England were the only people whose grades counted towards their final degree grade and everyone from all the other countries just have to pass the year. They're allowed to do so many more subjects that weren't even related to their course, whereas we, we had to pick which subjects we would study before we went over there and try and match them to what we would have studied in the UK. Whereas the students from America were just doing loads of random subjects that they found easy to bump their grades up. In terms of the differences between student nightlife, so it was very different. At the University of Queensland in Australia, it was a campus university, so all the university buildings were all together in one kind of village, and in Sheffield everything was spread out everywhere. But in Sheffield we went to lots of nightclubs, the union was really active, so even the student union had a nightclub and bars on site and they'd put free buses on to take you from the halls to the nightclubs and in Brisbane it was very different so there wasn't really much nightlife in terms of clubs. We used to go to bars with late night dance floors sometimes but generally we'd just have parties within the colleges so every couple of weeks one college would host a big party and it would normally be themed in a fancy dress and everyone would just go to that college and it would be a big outdoor party so kind of like a house party but on a really big scale. In Sheffield we did have a ball once or twice a year in halls and we had the same thing in our college in Australia but what was strange was so one of the balls was a formal ball which was black tie and the other one was fancy dress and they called this mini ball so you'd go out and have your party in fancy dress usually in like a club or somewhere and then the next day, this is the weirdest thing, they'd have this day called recovery where you got on a bus, they took you to a field where there was hose pipes and plastic sheeting and big, big vats of alcohol and then everyone would just get drunk, like skid along these sheets, roll around and wrestle in the mud and then rip each other's clothes off. So. I remember going down to breakfast in a skirt and a top and someone was like, you can't wear that. <laughs> I just didn't understand why but I got... I got changed and then I discovered why, so you basically went with swimwear and then like old clothes on top and everyone would just rip everyone else's clothes. It was the strangest thing but it was really good fun. In terms of what we did on the weekends, so in Australia, because it's so big, so many people were hours and hours away from their families so everyone tended to be around at the weekends, whereas in Sheffield most people were like one or two hours away from their families so people went home a lot more on weekends to visit their families. 
So in Australia on weekends from Brisbane, we could get the train to the Gold Coast. So we used to do that quite a lot. So we'd have beach days at Surfers Paradise, or if people had family living in the Gold Coast, we'd go and stay with them and have parties at their house. In Sheffield, we went to the Peak District once or twice, but it wasn't really a regular thing. We mainly just stayed at home, went shopping, or just went out at night to nightclubs. Also in Australia, because the summer holidays fell at Christmas time, which was halfway through my year, we had three months off that we could just go and travel. So I did my first ever backpacking trip around Australia during that time. Another difference is the sporting culture. So Australia is really big on sports and there's a really big difference between universities in England and Australia. So we had this enormous sports oval. People used to go out and play football all the time. People were on hockey teams, all sorts of stuff going on. We lived right by a river, so they'd have rowing regattas with all the colleges competing against each other. Another really weird difference is <laughs> nudity was a big thing in Australia. Every time people got drunk, they'd be running across the sports pitch naked, they'd be <laughs> flashing everyone. It was, I don't know if it's the warm weather or the big drinking culture, but the nudie run was a big thing where people would just take all their clothes off and just run across the sports pitch for no reason, really. <laughs> and there's a song called Eagle Rock, and whenever this came on in a bar or nightclub, all the boys would have to pull their trousers down and then they'd just stand there until it finished. <laughs> it was, very different to culture in the UK, it's too cold for that. In terms of the weather differences, obviously Australia is generally much hotter than the UK, particularly being in Brisbane, that's up in the tropics, so it was very, very hot. And another big difference is up there, you get the wet season in the summer. So I remember having the first really big torrential downpour, and rather than stay inside, all the Australians grabbed their body boards, I don't know where they got these from, and then just went running across the grass and like skidding on their stomachs and the whole field was just full of people <laughs> just rolling around on the floor, it's very weird. In terms of the wildlife, totally different. So in England you'll get a few sparrows, some house spiders. In Australia you'll have geckos, which are little lizards. They'll come in into your room. You've got weird Christmas beetle things that are really twinkly and just fly around making loads of noise. You've got turkeys wandering down the street, you've got huge birds, you've got colourful parrots everywhere. You get some really big spiders, very, very different. In terms of clothing, it was very casual in Brisbane. This was a long time ago now, so maybe it's changed, but you pretty much wore shorts and t-shirt in the day. You had flip-flops or thongs, as they call them in Australia. So you'd have your day thongs, and then you'd have your going out thongs, which were slightly nicer ones, maybe with some beads on, or a bit shiny. I don't think I saw anyone wear heels, apart from when we had the ball once a year. That's it for my differences between a university in Australia and the UK. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you're thinking of studying in either of these countries or if you've already done it and noticed any more differences. Please like and subscribe for more videos on life in Australia. Thanks for watching.